Swedish activist Andreas thinks disrupting the lives of ordinary people, as Marcus did, is the wrong way to fight back. So I want to meet the man who's leading this strategy. Roger Hallam co-founded both Extinction Rebellion and Just Stop Oil. He's been imprisoned himself for his activities. Really simple terms, at this point in time, just now, um, are the protests that Just Stop Oil are, are making effective? They may be. It's difficult to tell. Because social systems are not like car engines. You know, I can't say to you, if we do this, then that will happen and we'll win. That's not how society works. There's an element, there's an intrinsic element of chance. And if you want to ask me, well, are we going to have, get there in time? I don't know. You know, I'm not, I can't do miracles. All I can say is, you just got to keep pushing. And if you want a practical advice here, you know, for all the people watching this, is yes, you have to do civil disobedience. But look, he, OK, so it's just stop oil now and the protests that we're seeing. You, you can't carry on plying the same thing. But they soon become tired. No, you can only, no, you, no, you can only throw soup over a Van Gogh a limited <laughs> number of times and, and continue true. to get the message out. That's true, but we're not in the entertainment industry here, right? What we're in, what we're looking at is what's effective, and what's effective is people transgressing basic laws. What happens over and over and over again in history, and I suspect we're approaching this point, is everything looks like it's really completely hopeless and you're getting nowhere, and then you have a trigger event and you have a massive change. Roger's vision does not include violence. It's a non-violent, peaceful uprising of ordinary people who've had enough. Think of the, the Salt March. Why is that iconic? It's because of the vulnerability of everyday Indians getting their heads bashed in by the British. That basically changed the whole atmosphere of the Indian independence struggle. Basically, after that, it was done. What about, you know, focusing on, you know, violence towards property? Do we need... Is that part of our portfolio now? Do we need to start... Essentially, do we need to start blowing up pipelines? <laughs> I know. I was hoping you weren't going to ask me that question. But... <sighs> Let me think. How can I explain this succinctly? Um... I, I'm going to make a proposition to you, right? That society is basically a community. It's a community of love. It's a community of morality. It's a community of connection. If we don't have all those things in our lives, then we go mentally ill pretty quickly. Violence creates more violence, and it brings things to a lower level. And what public, disruptive, non-violent action does is pricks the conscience. And it's not about blowing things up, right? So you're saying we prick the conscience, but we don't stab the conscience. If you're aggressive and violent and hateful and secretive, then what human nature does is it cuts you off. Classical nonviolence, it's about the psychology. It's about the communication of, I'm a human being, I'm a grandmother, I'm in that road, I'm getting knocked over, you know, because the point of social struggle is on the everyday act. This is why authoritarian regimes collapse. It's not like there's some weird activist blowing up a pipeline in Scotland. This is a grandmother walking down the pavement. Everyone walks down the pavement and then gets dragged off by the police. That violates the British sense of fair play. OK. Imagine you can sleep this evening wake up and you could orchestrate something to happen tomorrow which would bring us closer to that tipping point what would that be um it's gonna be cheeky you can be as cheeky as you like you do something and end up getting banged up me yeah get arrested no you get banged up in prison yeah because people need inspiration and there's a we can we know there's a handful of people in british public life who people enormously respect and you're one of them. If you can convince me right, that that's the best thing to do, then that's on my agenda. Yeah. There's no question of that. Yeah. Well, obviously, you know, seriously speaking, I know we're doing this recording here, but I am actually talking to you here, right, Chris? And I'm not saying this because I'm trying to put you on the spot, but I can tell you with absolute categorical certainty that major things will happen when public figures 
do what public figures have always done at times of crisis, which is lead. <laughs>